This is the first section of uh, chapter 6 in the core 2 book on hyperbolic functions and it's an introduction to the hyperbolic functions. Now the hyperbolic functions um, are related to the normal functions for sine, cos and tan. You'll see that some of the identities and rules that we have for sine, cos and tan can be um, also used for these hyperbolic functions. We have hyperbolic function buttons on our calculators. <coughs> on, old can, on old calculators, it'll actually say sine h, cos h, tan h. Um, but on the class with calculators, if you want to get the hyperbolic functions, you will need to press the option button. Yeah, so if you've got the class with uh, fx 991ex, which I think pretty much everyone has, um, you press uh, the option button OPTN, OPTN, let's get that box right, and OPTN, and once you press that, number one is where you get your hyperbolic functions and you'll see, you'll see sine h, cos h, tan h, and then some inverse ones as well. Right, so let's start with the hyperbolic sine function, which we write as sine h. Now that's pronounced shine. And that is defined in terms of e to the x. That's another thing about these hyperbolic functions. They are defined using e to the x. So that's e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2. Um, cos, the hyperbolic function for cos. Uh, which we pronounce as cosh and that's defined as very similar to the one for cos there's just a plus sign instead of a minus sign between the two e to the x's so it's e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2 and then the hyperbolic function for tan which we uh, pronounce as tanch i think that's how you might spell it and well we know that tan is sine over cos, tanch is shine over cosh. Now, what's that going to be? Well, um, sine is e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2 divided by uh, cos x, cosh x, in other words, times by the reciprocal of that, 2 over e to the x plus e to the minus x. Well, then we get e to the x minus e to the minus x over e to the x plus e to the minus x. Now, if we times the top and the bottom of this by uh, e to the x, we just get like a nicer form of this, something a bit nicer to use. So times by e to the x times by e to the x, which basically means just adding e to the power, we end up with e to the 2x minus 1 over e to the 2x plus 1. It's just a nicer form to use. So there are three hyperbolic functions, shine, cosh, and tanch. So I need to do a bubble that goes like this, don't I? It goes around there for tan h. Right, okay, find the two decimal places the values of, right, so this can be done on our calculator, yeah, by going to the menu, uh, pressing option and choosing one, I think it was, we said for the hyperbolic functions, uh, but we're actually going to use the definitions, the formula for these, so shine, Three just means put three into this, so e to the three minus e to the minus three over two. Now, if I just use the hyperbolic function button, I can see I get ten point zero one or zero two uh, to two decimal places. We normally give angle answers to two decimal places, um, but using the formula. Press the fraction button, uh, e to the 3, it's a shame that I've got to press inverse to get 
uh, the E button minus shift log E to the negative three, scroll down to the bottom two, and I get exactly the same answer. So it's a two decimal place, I get 10.02. Using definition, as I said, we can just use the calculator to work these out. Cosh one, that would be E to the one plus E to the minus one over two. So, um, so shift E to the one plus E to the negative one. And then I want to divide that by two and I get 1.543. So 1.54 to two decimal places. And C, tanch 0 0.8. So remember that was e to the 2x. So e to the 2 times 0 0.8 minus 1 over e to the 2 times 0 0.8 plus 1. That's easier to remember than the, um, than the other form. Right, so um, that will be, so I'll press the fraction button, shift log e to the 1.6 basically, minus one. At the bottom, I'm going to have uh, also shift log e to the 1.6, but plus one. And I get 0 0.664 or 0 0.66. To do this in places. So as I said, um, these can be done using your calculator. And even on old calculators, they'd have this hyperbolic function. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Moving on. Find the exact value of tanch log four. Right. So what we're going to do. Here, tanch log 4, we're going to use the formula. Now, again, we could use our calculator, but in the formula, I'm going to put log 4. So, E, and it says exact value. My calculator may not necessarily give me the exact value. So, E, 2 times log 4 minus 1 over E, 2 times log 4 plus 1. Now, what can we do with that? Well, the two that's in the front can become a power. So we've got e to the log um, four squared minus one, e to the log four squared plus one. Now, the reason we did that is because we want the e and the log next to each other for them to cancel out. So when I do that, I'll basically have 4 squared minus 1 over 4 squared plus 1, which will be 16 minus 1, 15 over 17. Yeah, and that's the exact value. May not necessarily get it on my calculator, but we're just using the rules that we have for log and base e um, uh, to help us simplify that. Right, use the definition of shine x to find to two decimal places the value of x for which shine x is 5. So we've been told that shine x is 5. Now what does that mean? When it says use the definition, it doesn't mean do shine inverse on your calculator. We're going to write that e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2, that is shine x equals 5. So that means that e to the x minus e to the minus x equals 10 by times in both sides um, by 2. Right, I'm going to bring the 10 over. So I've got e to the x minus e to the minus x minus 10 equals 0. Now I'm going to times everything by e to the x. Whenever you've got a negative power, and I can see I've got a negative power here, we can't really solve anything with negative powers like this. So what we're going to do, multiply everything by e to the x, that basically will become 1. 
So e to the x times e to the x becomes e to the 2x. Uh, e to the minus x times e to the positive x becomes e to the 0, so it becomes 1. Minus e to the, or 10e, 10e to the x minus 10 e to the x equals 0. Let's write this here. It looks more like a quadratic. So e to the 2x minus 10 e to the x minus 1 equals 0. Now, lots of different ways you can do this. You could just factorize it. Some students say, well, I'm going to let y equal e to the x. And then I'll have y squared minus 10y minus 1 equals 0. Right, I'm now going to solve that to find y doesn't look like it factorizes. Um, so I'm going to use my calculator, menu and A, um, a polynomial degree 2, and I've got 1 in front of the square, then negative 10, then negative 1, and I get y is, I get 5 plus root 26 and 5 minus so y equals 5 plus or minus root 26. Right, so that's what e to the x equals. Okay, so e to the x equals 5 plus or minus root 26. So if I want to find x, okay, it's basically to log of both sides. So x is going to be the log of. 5 plus or minus root 26. Now, um, if I were to do 5 minus the square root of 26, I get, let's just set this up, I get a negative number. 5 minus root 26 um, is like negative 0, 0.0. And you can't do the log of a negative number. So, um, the only one we're going to get an answer for is when we do log of 5 plus root 26. Yeah, you could try it yourself. If you tried doing the log, the natural log of that number, it was just going to come up error because it's, it's negative. So I'm going to do the log of 5 plus the square root of root 26. Not sure why I've put a 2 there. Let's take that out. And I get 2.312, so three significant figures, 2.31. So x equals 2.31 to two decimal places. So it might be worth here saying that 5 minus root 26, 5 minus root 26, is negative and we can't do the negative of um, or we can't do the log of a negative number or the log of a negative number is not defined so let's just correct that sentence we can't do the log ln of a negative number so that's why we just did the log of 5 plus root 26, not 5 minus root 26. Right, now we do need to know the graphs of uh, shine and cosh. Now if you have a look, you can see that um, the graph of shine is like tucked in nicely between e to the x and negative uh, e to the minus x. That's because it's the average of these two graphs. Remember the definition for shine was um, e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. Yeah, So it's the average of the two. That's why it's like tucked in, slots in nicely between those two because you're basically adding these two together, that and that, dividing by 2. And you get the average there. Okay. Now shine x looks like this. Yeah. Now it looks like um, sine, but up the ends and down here it goes a bit wrong. If I were to draw 
a graph of of sine member sine um, actually sort of goes like this doesn't it yeah now um, my angles may not be perfect here yeah and and they actually may be stretched out a bit more I think it probably is stretched out a bit more let's um let's be a bit more generous so maybe something like that and then maybe something like this yeah so when like uh, the angles are small when we're close to zero shine and sine are sort of pretty close to each other but as we increase then it goes off a bit so maybe we can use shine for an approximation for sine or sine as an approximation for shine later on now if we look at the graph at the bottom which is the graph of uh, cosh x here so we've got shine x here that's the graph here um, and the graph here um, well we've got the graph of e to the negative x here the graph of e to the x now what did we do we added these two together then divided by two so you've almost got the average of the sum of them if you add them together rather than divide them then you get like the average of that graph which is that cosh x so because remember the definition was e to the x plus e to the minus x so the sum of the two um, divided by two we've got e to the x there e to, e to the minus x so imagine the sum of those two then divided by two so you can see again it tucks in nicely between those two graphs yeah tucks in nicely here between the two but it's close to the top one and the bottom because we're adding them this time and finding the average and you can see the shape here so again it seems to look like cos here but it doesn't really sort of fit as we go later on yeah so maybe for small angles it, it works out the same now we do need to know these graphs and you'll remember a couple of identities you may remember that the uh, if you've got sine of a negative angle it equals the negative sign of the positive angle now have a look compare that to this it's the same isn't it yeah so for this hyperbolic function we've got like an equivalent identity and you remember with uh, cos if you've got cos of a negative angle that's equal to the cos of the positive angle again compare that to this it's like an equivalent identity it works in the same way so we can use the normal trig identities and uh, use them for these um, hyperbolic identities that we have so this one here is asking us to sketch the graph of tanh x Okay, this is one you just need to memorize really you can work out from scratch but it's easier just to remember what the graph is so here's our axis x-axis here y-axis here and again it is a bit like the graph of tan but it goes a bit crazy so we've actually got asymptotes around this way like this Remember the asymptotes with normal tan go the other way. Tan inverse has, um, or arc tan has asymptotes that go this way, but not a one and minus one. So here we got one and minus one. We got these asymptotes. And what the graph does? Just want to remember the shape really. It does this. It goes right down like that. It's an asymptote, and it flips up goes up there through zero and then it goes up there so it's not the greatest sketch in the world but what's important is that we've got these asymptotes asymptotes and we've got one there and we got one there so we do need to remember what these graphs of tanch kosh and shine look like okay you should now be able to do exercise 6a on pages one two two to one two three so here are your identities for shine
Kosh and Tanch. Okay, or oh, our definitions for sine, Kosh, and Tanch using E. Then we've got um, two identities here, which basically very similar, almost identical to the ones that we have for um, normal trig functions. And then the other thing that we, we want to know are the graphs. I'll draw the sketch of the graphs here. So we'll start with a sketch of um, Shine X. So that sort of goes a bit like this. No, it doesn't. Let's try again. This is better. There we go. So this one is shine. No asymptotes or anything like that. Let's do kosh. That's the easy one to remember. So kosh, just like that U shape. Yeah, that's easy to remember. And then this crosses at one, the number one there. So that is Kosh. And then the last one is Tanch. It's the one we just sketched. So asymptotes at one and negative one. And the graph sort of goes smoothly between the two like that. 